Well, it's a glorious Easter weekend, and we're glad you could join us here at Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, and Matt has left his wingman again. So in for Matt Allen, we've got Lee Weatherby with Accurate Automotive, and we are all here to help you with your car. We've also brought Ken and Keith from Tri-City Transmission, being that today is Transmission Day. And we're going to help you create realistic expectations for your auto repair. If you've got car questions, we've got answers. So we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, transmissions, transmissions, transmissions. How to handle your transmission. I've heard this, and I have no idea where the statistic comes from. But the average person will buy a transmission every seven and a half years. Transmissions fail four to one over engines. We can change our engine oil, and we do often, yet we neglect our transmission, and people tell us we don't have to service our transmission. Lee, do you service your transmission, or do you neglect it? You know what? <clears throat> now I, uh, I'm a servicer, and I'm a believer in it, but... Uh... You know, there was a time when I was a little bit younger that uh, I did neglect my transmission. I, I assumed just, uh, even in the business, that I would just get in the car and I would drive and it would take me where I wanted to go and just how magically that, you know, I would never be burning up that fluid or anything else. So <laughs> I've, I've been on both sides of that fence, Dave. <clears throat> well, Keith, you've been in the transmission business for 18 years now and transmission service. There's so much bad information out there about transmission service. What have you found? I found it's better to be proactive and change the oil as often as you possibly can, usually at least once a year. And I'm a living witness with my vehicles. It really helps out to give them a good, fresh drink of oil. Well, here's the thing that people probably don't realize if you haven't bought a transmission in the last seven and a half years or maybe the last 15 years because you've been one of the lucky ones. Transmissions have doubled in price. They've got their full electronics now. You know, we used to have two-speed transmissions, three-speed transmissions. Now we've got nine-speed transmissions. Don't you think that thing wants a nice, cool, fresh drink of fresh transmission fluid? Or do you believe what the manufacturer tells you? Not to worry about it. It'll take care of itself. Ken, you've been rebuilding transmissions for 30 years. When you take them apart, can you tell the difference in a transmission that's been serviced versus one that hasn't? Oh, yeah, definitely. You can tell right away. And sometimes you can tell just by checking dipstick oil or anything. And I think that's part of the problem with the new cars is that some people find out they open up their hood, there's no dipstick anymore. So they figure, oh, I don't have to worry about it. And they just leave it at that. Out of sight, out of mind, no dipstick to check. And we had someone in the other day just complaining because there was no dipstick on their car. And it's, it's a process to change or check transmission fluid anymore. Got to drive the thing, get it warm, get it up in the air. Take a plug off, maybe look at the temperature of the transmission on a scanner to see what it is. So go ahead, Lee. Well, I, I think it's uh, something should be noted is that it, it can be a little bit confusing uh, for the consumer out there now. Is because with the manufacturers, they're extending their service intervals uh, for transmissions, um, you know, alluding us to believe that we can go 100,000, 150,000 uh, without having, you know what I mean, to interact or change these fluids. Um, and, and ultimately, that, that really is not the case. And we know that especially out here with the heat that uh, we have in Arizona in particular, that that is, um, you know, just like he said earlier, a good fresh drink of oil, you know, <laughs> it will go a long way uh, in helping us prolong the life of our unit. Well, I think the point there with the manufacturers and for the consumer, I do believe you're confused. And I talk to people every day that have a million questions about transmission service. And if you have questions with transmission service, give us a call. We're happy to answer. If you've got questions about anything in relation to the automobile, don't hesitate. But the manufacturer wants to pretend. You know, there was a, there was a uh, commercial I saw, and there was a picture of a uh, Toyota transmission, and they stacked nine bottles of fluid in front of it. And there was a picture of a General Motors transmission. They stacked 70 bottles of fluid in it. And I thought to myself, and they were, their point was is that we're green, you know, and Toyota's really made that with the Prius, and we're green, and they show a picture of a car being made out of, out of the wilderness. But their point there is we're green. And I look at that, and I say, those transmissions really have the same technology. Why does Toyota's last longer than General Motors? Or doesn't need less service than General Motors? Well, it's just simply they just said, you don't have to service it like we used to. And everyone's changed that expectation, but what is their motive? You know, they're in the business of selling cars primarily. So if the car doesn't last, you go buy another one. If they can't sell you another car, what do they get to sell you? They get to sell you parts. More parts, yeah. So anyway, so uh, <clears throat> I think the consumer, you got to be aware of that. 
there's some manufacturer recommendations that I absolutely believe in, and there's some re- manufacturer recommendations that I just think are smoke and mirrors, and that's one of them because they want that cafe rating. Well, I, I like you said, Dave, I mean, really you have to look at the motives, you know what I mean, the manufacturers, um, because – this this manual that they sell us that says well you can go uh, this interval between services uh, basically is utilized as a sales manual so that they can pre-sell their vehicles um, and so that we can look at what cost of ownership is um, for anybody that really wants to take care of their vehicle I think it's important uh, that when they get with their technician that they find out and interact a little bit say what is your intent you know for your car and how long would you like to keep it what's your expectation um, and then really build that relationship with your you know your technician so that you can get a game plan Keith spoke about it earlier you can choose to be proactive which is where you're going to get a game plan, you're going to build it, you're going to put it together uh, so that you know every year or every year and a half Every 30,000 miles, I'm going to be doing my transmission service. I'm going to do my fluid exchange. I'm going to get a filter, you know, and I'm going to get that thing so that I can have it last me for 100, 200, or 250,000 miles. And I think it's important for the public to really know that you have to be suspect of what the manufacturer is trying to really uh, say with uh, don't service your transmission because, um, you know, there, there, there might be something else. And you really owe it to yourself to at least get your transmission fluid checked out annually to see, hey, is this really uh, able to go the distance that the manufacturer says? You owe it to yourself, especially with that kind of an investment. Absolutely. Well, I literally got a got a piece of information from ZF, the transmission manufacturer, the guys that build these things, and they put their transmissions in Fords, they put them in BMWs, they put them in Volkswagens, and uh, <clears throat> BMW is a brand I think of that little green sticker on the transmission pan that says "Lifetime Fill." And, uh, you know, the, the bulletin from ZF literally says that's just not true. Uh, they took something we designed, and they, they made it fit their marketing, not what we designed. I mean, they built a thing. They designed it. They're, they're brilliant transmissions. I mean, there's a lot going on. It's my, my belief that the modern transmission fails for an internal hydraulic leak, and that internal hydraulic leak starts at the valve body. So in a valve body, there literally is... Uh, a dozen valves that are doing all kinds of crazy things, running different directions, and it's a very, very tight between the valve and the sleeve. And if you don't have clean fluid in there, you got to replace it. We did a valve body in a BMW, and I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to say it over the air, but it was just that expensive for ZF. It was a $4,000 valve body. The guy was happy because it was cheaper than the $9,000 transmission, but I like to think that could have been prevented if he didn't wait till 80,000 miles. We only service the transmission because we had to replace the valve body. What, why did he wait that long? Well, there's, <clears throat> you know, there's no, no real... Uh, he probably waited that long because he understood that, you know what I mean, the manufacturer's confusing him, telling him that he can wait that long in its lifetime. Um, by doing so, ran into a problem and an issue uh, like you're talking about. But the, the, the most beautiful thing that we have is we have control. As a consumer and the owner of our vehicles, um, you said in the beginning of the show, transmission, transmission, transmission. I'm going to tell you maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. You know, maintenance is more essential than, than ever before, um, uh, particularly with the fluids and the things that, you know, cars are being built. And they're being built better. And, you know, the, the modern transmission truly is a marvel, you know, if you, if you look at the things. Absolutely. But heat, heat is the one thing that breaks everything down, whether it's the human body or the automobile or anything else in between. Heat is what tears it down, and fluid is susceptible to heat. And so when we go through and we become, like I say, proactive, because unfortunately, the gentleman you're talking about, he was a little bit reactive, wasn't he? he 4000 bucks. <laughs> definitely $4,000 reactive. And I think the point here is that, you know, you buy this car, you may, whether you plan on keeping it for 100,000 miles or 200,000 miles, either way, service that transmission so you just don't have to buy one. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I would love to buy one because I sell them, but at the same time, really, you can prevent a lot of that stuff. We'd rather just service it and take care of you and uh, have a smile when you leave because you're not, you're not buying something big and bad and ugly, and no one wants transmission issues. Yeah, but other, but Dave, knowing you, I, I mean, you would probably much rather see your customers coming back and being very proactive doing their transmission services than selling them a unit. A lot, lot easier for you, you know what I mean, to be 
really um, an advocate for the consumer, uh, helping them to understand that they've just got to change their thought process just a little bit and just change it to the point where, okay, I'm going to be a little bit more proactive with my vehicle. I'm going to expect it to give me a little more out of it. You know what I mean? So there should be an expectation equated with it. Um, But I'm going to do that with a plan of action, you know what I mean, with my guy, with my technician, my mechanic. And I'm going to get in, I'm going to talk to him and tell him, hey, I'd like to do this. Can you help me get there? And you know what? All the bumper to bumper guys are going to be more than happy to sit down with their customers and help them get to what they'd like to see. Well, we got a couple more tips, as Jill said, how to avoid the auto repair shop when it comes to transmissions. And we're going to tell you just how to do that when we come back. And we've got open lines at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, and filling in for Matt Allen, we've got Lee Weatherby with Accurate Automotive, along with Ken Clark and Keith. I just screwed up your guys' name. They, they, I call yeah. them K-squared at work, but it's Ken and Keith, the transmission builders at Tri-City Transmission, and we're all here to help you with your car, whether it's transmission question. Today's a day to have it. I've got a couple of veteran transmission builders in the house. And, uh, or anything in relation to your car, give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. I've got a little bit of big news. We've got Lee Weatherby, and you guys hear his commercials on the air. And uh, he's a guy that, you know, you sound like, I want that guy to take care of my car. He is that guy. And uh, he just won an award from ATI, which is Automotive Training Institute, which is a national organization. And he is... Number one in the nation. He's been hanging out there in the top ten for the last couple of years, and he finally made the push. Congratulations, Lee, and uh, tell us just a little bit about that quickly. Wow, Dave. Hey, thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Um, you know, it, it was really unexpected. I, I can say that uh, when they uh, announced my name, uh, I pretty much probably was the first time in many years that I was left a little bit speechless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know he never gets speechless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but what, what a great honor. It was. Uh, it's really something um, uh, to be... Uh, the top of anything. Um, And and yet the beautiful part about it is it's about the people that we get to serve. I love my job. I'm very passionate about it. I've dedicated my life to, you know, this industry and the work that we do. I I love the team that that I've built and that I get to work with, and particularly our customers, the the people that come through that we get to serve on a daily basis. Um, It's just a a true joy. And this was kind of just a little piece of icing on the cake and very, very uh, uh, unexpected, but uh, wonderful at the same time. Well, congratulations. Well, up for this segment, we're going to go with Bill in Peoria with a transmission question. Go ahead, Bill. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. I have uh, two questions, actually. Uh, when you change your oil, should you also change your filter every time? And my other question, is there any manufacturer whose transmission is better than the other? <laughs> I would say, and I'm going to let the builders maybe follow this up, but for your first question, we love to change the filter. We do a traditional pan-off service. We remove the transmission pan. One of the things we get to do when we change that filter is dissect it to find out if there's anything negative going on in the inside of the transmission. And I think you as the consumer, you, you want to know what's going on with the transmission if you're starting to have problems, if you're starting to have issues. So go ahead, Keith. Uh, yes, as a transmission builder, I definitely want to know what's happening with that filter because it really gives me a lot of information as to the health and the, what's actually occurred in that vehicle to let me know if there's something coming apart. And sometimes it doesn't all up, end up in the bottom of the pan, and it gets caught in the fil- filter. That means the filter is doing its job, of course. But um, without that information, then I can't make an accurate determination of whether we should service your vehicle or not. Go ahead, Lee. And um, just so you know, there there are some vehicles that don't have pans and they don't have filters that are serviceable. Um, so there's, it, it all depends on on the type of unit. But I, I would think that uh, we would all be in accordance that if if the unit does come with a, a filter, uh, it's it's generally a, a great recommendation to service that filter each and every time you do a fluid exchange. And this is the one thing that I forgot to mention is that filters as as transmissions wear and clutch debris comes apart and ends up in that filter, that filter really starts to plug off. That filter is the inlet to the pump. The pump is the hydraulic heart of the transmission. So as that filter starts to restrict, 
it drags down your line pressure and your transmission, and therefore it's going to lower the life expectancy of the transmission. So absolutely change the filter. Uh, some people believe, hey, we'll do it every other time. Flush it one time, change the filter the next time with a pan-off service. There's different ways, but that's something you can work out with your shop that you have a relationship with that we preach about here at Bumper to Bumper Radio. And uh, go ahead, Ken. I was just going to say, related to his other question, which transmission fails least compared to others? Uh, being in the business for 30 years, I don't think it really matters. It's a numbers game sometimes. You know, there's millions and millions of Dodge Caravans out there. So one week you may get all Dodge Caravans, and then the next week you may get a Toyota Tranny. And it really doesn't matter. It's hard to say I'm going to buy a car because that transmission is never at a transmission shop. It just doesn't work that way. That's a good point, and I would think they also make, they all make good ones and they all make bad ones. I've seen I've seen Toyota transmissions that I'm not impressed with, and then I've seen some Toyota transmissions that don't make anymore that were just fantastic, and they never went out. and And they change over the years. You know, one year you've got a good Toyota transmission, one year you don't, and it just depends on the design and the di- designs change over the years. So don't pick a car based on transmission necessarily. You know, um, I have a little bit of a pet peeve with CVT transmissions. I'm not a big fan. I think they're disposable transmissions, so I uh, don't like them. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, thanks for the call. We're going to go with Jerry in Chandler with a transmission question. Go ahead, Jerry. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, this is Jerry. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, I've got a nine, oh, I'm sorry, 2000 Ford Ranger that I just purchased from my father-in-law. It's got 96,000 miles on it. Uh, it just suddenly decided that it's going to shift very hard from first to second year. Took it back to the shop that uh, he has traded with forever. It's a very reliable shop in Chandler, and they say it needs a transmission. I'm, my question is, I am more inclined to try replacing the fluid and filter first and see if that'll take care of the problem. Am I just wasting my time and money doing that, or do I really need a transmission? I don't like either of those two answers, to be quite frank with you. Uh, 4R44E is a transmission in that vehicle. It's uh, the same transmission they use in a Ford Explorer many times. Ford Rangers are so light, I see those transmissions often go 200,000 miles. So it's only halfway through its life period. Uh, the very fact that it has a hard 1-2 shift doesn't mean the transmission's bad. It could, by all means, but it needs to be diagnosed. Don't just throw, go throwing a fluid change at it. It needs to be diagnosed. A lot of times we have a uh, 4R44E on a Ranger, 2000 roughly, Ken, in our shop right now, and we suspect a blown valve body gasket. Such a common problem. So, And the other thing that happens on Fords, if there's any sort of code, diagnostic trouble code stored, what it does will actually, the computer will elevate the pressure, the line pressure in the transmission. So it opens up that valve, and it's full pressure. All the shifts are going to feel hard. The one-two shift always feels the hardest, and the reason being is that's when inertia is the greatest. That's when you have the biggest change in RPM, and you're going from a stop to, you know, once you're going third gear, I mean, the car's already going 35 miles an hour. There's not a lot of lot going on there, and by the time you hit fourth gear, I mean, it just rolls right into fourth. Ken? No, I agree. And kind of something I've been thinking about this last week, because I've been seeing a lot of it lately, is that uh, a lot of people will bring their car in saying that the car has been somewhere else. Someone told them the transmission needs to be replaced. They brought it to a shop that maybe pulled codes on it, but they've erased the codes, and now everything's okay. Because, like you said, line pressure gets elevated a little bit. The problem I'm having as a diagnostic guy is figuring out what codes were in there. So we need to not let them clear the codes and leave them in there and just uh, re-diagnose the car completely. Hey, Jerry, if you're going to work with a transmission guy like Ken, uh, you know, the thing is, you don't want to clear the codes out, and he's going to be looking at that fluid to make a determination on the health of that transmission. So if you service the transmission, you've taken away all our evidence. Uh, We had a vehicle in from Goodyear this week, and uh, the guy was complaining of an intermittent hard shift. It was a GMC, and it was set in a torque converter code, which elevated the pressure. But he only felt it every third week, and he thought, you know, I have a problem, but I know why. So when we come back, we're taking more calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, and filling in for Matt Allen, who continually is leaving his wingman. We hope he comes back, because he went on a cruise right now, and cruise ships, I heard, are a little dangerous right now. Depends if it's carnival. We brought in uh, Ken Clark. See, I did it again. (laughs) Ken and Keith. 
Ken and Keith are, are, are here, both two veteran transmission builders. And uh, Ken, actually, he does, he's our main diagnostician at Tri-City Transmission, and he runs about 230 cars that he personally diagnoses at our shop. So he checks them in, he, they get repaired, he checks them out. So 230 times a month. And uh, during the break, Lee was talking about specialty and the things that, that these guys do because we see it so many times Go ahead. Yeah, you know, Dave, it's transmissions, um, like we talked about, they can be an expensive proposition. And when you're looking at, uh, you know, the expenditure that goes along with that, I think it's vital to really understand. You mentioned before you didn't like either one of the two options uh, for Jerry. Um, and diagnosis is, is, is what you put forward. And, and I will tell you, I, I just think that's absolutely wonderful. And as we, we sit down and talk about it, you know, we're, <clears throat> we do everything in, in our shop. Um, and we also do transmission. We have problems uh, that overwhelm us. We, we go to you. you. Call us. That's right, uh, and 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 we do that specifically um, so that we don't have to um, push forward something that may or may may not be necessary. We want to make sure. Yeah, there's a little cost that's equated to it with it, but I can tell you. Just like we went to back in the beginning of the show, that gentleman that spent four thousand dollars, his other proposition was to spend nine and overhaul. Both would have fixed it. Both right. would have fixed it. But you know what? I, I want my customer to be able to get the benefit of the doubt, to be able to keep the dollars in their pocket, and therefore it makes way more sense to take it and and, and go to the next step. You know, that should be the automatic role of, of, of each of the shops. Just go to the next level. If you don't have the ability or capability of doing the complete evaluation or diagnostics, you know what? You guys are specialists in what you do. We can always come to you and say, hey, listen, we need this. And, and certainly for a price and for a fee, th guess what? It, it generally winds up saving the consumers thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Yeah. Go ahead, Keith. And Lee made a very important point. Uh, one of the biggest things that I harp on is I don't want somebody that doesn't know about a transmission to make a recommendation because that really scares the customers half to death. Just like I don't want my primary care physician telling me I need open heart surgery and they didn't check me out completely. So, yeah, it is necessary to get a thorough diagnosis. Check the computer for sure because the computer's been with the vehicle the whole time. Records a lot of information and we need to know all of that information to make an accurate assessment of what way the customer needs to go with their problem. Well, I like what Lee said, and, and I think, uh, you know, technicians, we're all borderline arrogant, but we think we, we like to think we know what we're doing. But he, he mentioned that he knew his limitations. There's some things, hey, we can take care of this, not a big deal. And when they're over their head, they have a good relationship. So we talk about relationships with shops as a consumer. Shop to shop, we have good relationships in order to take care of our customer. You'll find that at all the bumper bumper shops, we all talk, we all communicate. There's a lot of shops that are generalists in our in, in our network that when they've got a transmission issue, they call me up. They say, "Hey, we got this and this. What do you think? Are we on the right path?" And I, I appreciate that, that they're willing to do that versus sell something somebody they don't need. And we talked about the 1870 code during the break and, mm -hmm. and the definition of the code. It's a diagnostic trouble code, and it says 1870, and it says right behind it, transmission components slipping. And the gentleman that came from Goodyear to see us last week that we were talking about before the break, all we had to do was slip a valve in the valve body to fix it. But those transmissions are replaced on a regular basis from people who don't know any better. Okay? I mean, they say, oh, the transmission's slipping. It must be bad. Wait a minute. Transmissions, they are twice as expensive, but in my, in my estimation, they last twice as long with good service. We have this preconceived notion out there that transmissions are only good for 100,000 miles. And... Uh, you know, it's it's not true anymore. I mean, they cost twice as much, but a transmission, if you can get 200,000 miles out of it, go, you know. Lee, you mentioned that that's what you got out of this last transmission. First go around, you got 100,000. Yeah. Second go around, you got 200,000 miles out of it. Yep. But that's when you started servicing it because you didn't like buying it the first time. That's it. So yeah, anyway. The difference in proactive and reactive. Up first this segment, we are going to go with Tom in Phoenix on a transmission question. Go ahead, Tom. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, thank you, Dave. You bet. Uh, I have a 2001 Dodge pickup, uh, not a four-wheel drive. But when I'm driving down the freeway and I'm in high gear, that's fifth gear, it will slide right out into fourth. Is this a uh, this is an automatic transmission? No, it's standard. Manual transmission. It, it pops, six cylinder. Six cylinder. And it pops out of fifth. Yeah, it just slides right out. So sometimes I have to just kind of hold it in in, uh, in a high gear. Hold it in high gear. Go ahead, Lee. You know, uh, Tom, it sounds 
Plus, uh, how, about how many miles do you have on that vehicle, Tom? Uh, 200. About 200K. Um, it, it, it's possible. Uh, there's, there's synchronizers uh, and synchronizer gears that are, are in that uh, unit, um, and the synchronizer may be worn, and that's kind of the um, mechanism that would hold that into place, into gear. So you have a first, a second, third, fourth, fifth, and in this case a sixth gear um, where it would hold it into place. Uh, and that synchronizer probably is just worn down. It's generally uh, made out of brass or a material that's softer, uh, metal, something of that nature. Um, and, and when they wear, uh, this is usually one of the complaints that we would hear uh, is that, you know, it, it'll slip out of gear. I'll be driving. Um, in some cases, you may accelerate a little bit too quickly, uh, trying to pass or something, and all of a sudden it, it'll pop it. It basically it neutrals. Is that what it does, Tom? It neutrals back out, and you got to kind of pop it back up into gear? Well, yeah, I think I think it's going in a neutral versus, you know, coming out of six gear. And one of the things we do, Tom, and uh, it's a good question, it, when we check in transmissions is that we sit there, put it in first gear, and we, we hit the gas and let off the gas quickly. Hit the gas, let off the gas quickly. Uh, and we're trying to get it to pop out of gear to see if there's an issue with that gear. And then we'll do that in second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear. And we're looking for it to pop out. But we load, we load the drivetrain hard, and we let our foot off the gas real quickly to see if it pops out. Now, one of the things in, in Lee's right as far as synchros, the way synchros work is they stop the gear. The transmission actually has to stop to slide into the next gear, and synchros help to do that, and they can, they can wear out over time as far as that function of stopping the gear. But uh, the other thing that I see on a lot of these Chryslers with these transmissions, they have shifter assemblies that like to wear out, and it's, it's literally the forks and assemblies right on the top of the transmission that can sometimes be repaired without a major transmission and overhaul. That has a lot of miles on it, 200,000 miles, but I do see standards go a long time but more so we see issues with shifter mechanisms going bad. So thanks so much for the call, Tom. 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. We are going to go with Jesse. I'm not sure what he's looking for because they're not telling me, but go ahead, Jesse. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, yes, um, I have a couple questions on two of my vehicles. My first one is a 2001 Honda Civic. It's an automatic with 234,000 miles. It's uh, When you start driving it, you have to kind of, like, hit the gas just right, and if you don't, before it shifts, it'll kind of give you a clunk. But once it gets going, it shifts all the other gears, it seems, like, smoothly. Is this you just, know what that could be? just first thing in the morning? Um, no, it's constant and hasn't changed. Ken, any thoughts come to mind? Um, other than, are there any check engine lights on, stuff, something like that? Uh, no, there's not, and I never... I got the car when I was 18 five years ago, so I never serviced the transmission or never changed the fluid or anything, so I thought maybe mm. we the neglect on it we made it go bad. We promise not to scold you, but one of the things I think about on uh, front-wheel drive cars is engine mounts. In engine mounts, uh, there's a total of four of them on that car, one in front of the uh, transmission and engine below the radiator, one on the firewall, which is down where your feet are in the uh, engine and transmission connect right there. And those two mounts in particular, you're going to get a lot of floppiness to the engine and transmission. So a lot of times people coming in think they have a major transmission problem. Well, it may just be a matter of mounts. So, again, back to the uh, other guy's question. we got to diagnose it to find out what's wrong with it. And, uh, you know, 230,000 miles on a Honda is a lot of miles. Uh, on, on, a, on a Civic, I expect the transmission to last that long because they're light cars and they do relatively well. But what I, wrote, what I really want you to do on that Honda is service the heck out of that fluid. I mean, you, you may never buy a transmission for that car if you're servicing it. Yeah, and, and, Jesse, it's, it's time. Uh, uh, this is Lee, and um, it, it's time to service that fluid. Um, just on the sheer fact that it hasn't been done in, in, in five years, you're going to want to have uh, someone uh, take a look at the fluid, make sure. Uh, Honda's uh, that particular year is one of those uh, transmissions that we discussed earlier. It doesn't have a pan, um, and it doesn't have a filter that, that you can service. There is one internally, uh, but you have to disassemble it completely in order to be able to, to get to that. But um, I, I would tell you, uh, just like Dave said, you're going to want to have the mounts checked really closely, a uh, pretty common problem for those. Um, but uh, just in the simple fact that it's been five years since you've done some servicing with 231K, um, it, it can last and go a lot further. Get some fresh fluid in there. Give it a, give it a, give it a fresh drink. Well, this is a, this is a, a topic that uh, Ken and I have been talking a lot about lately. We had a call from a guy named Doug last week on a Lexus, and he said, man, he said, when I'm coasting up to a stoplight, the light turns green, and I get back in the gas, man, it shifts really hard, and it feels like it's hunting for gears. In my diagnosis over the phone, 
which I don't like to do, but uh, it was that it had a bad pressure regulator valve. Well, Doug ended up bringing it in, and I said, give us a lot of time with it. We need some time with it because this is a, it was a Lexus with 80,000 miles on it, U240 transmission, and uh, it was a two-step fix. Number one was to reprogram the computer because what the manufacturers recognize is as the transmission wears, it develops bad habits. Well, guess what? They can fix that with programming. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we did was reprogram the computer. So we, you know, we bought we bought the software from Toyota, plugged it into his car, reprogrammed it, took care of that that awkward. We call that a coasting down shift, is what that is, and it got rid of the hunting that was going on. And then a second concern: there was a buzzing noise uh, in in the transmission, especially when cold. And you know what that was? That was a pressure regulator valve that I thought from the beginning. So we went ahead and we changed that pressure regulator valve. So the question that I asked you. And because transmissions now last for 200,000 miles, not 100,000 miles, as people used to believe in, uh, I mean, fluids are getting better. If you're changing them, it's going to last. But do we repair the transmission? Do we replace the transmission? Or do we just simply reprogram the transmission? And that's the first thing Ken does when he's looking at a car is, hey, what's, what, what's going on? Is there any bulletins about this thing? Is there any information? Maybe you can fill us in more on that, Ken. Right. Well, I mean, that's a good thing about doing just transmissions is that I have access to all kinds of technical service bulletins for whatever make a model. So one of the first things I look at, especially if the car is less than 10 years old, I'll jump right on the internet and go to our sources and then I can check and make sure that there's not a bulletin for a reflash. Uh, even sometimes when the manufacturer sets up the vehicle originally, the, uh, the specifications they put into the computers, the parameters are just way too tight. And sometimes you'll even get a check engine light or a code and it can be for an engine problem, it could be for a transmission problem, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. Um, but a lot of people don't know that if your car is newer than 1996, you don't always have to replace the transmission or the computer. They can actually go in there and update it just like you would your home computer. You can put all new parameters in it and make it shift and drive like brand new. It's a whole lot different than the old days. The old days we had widgets and springs and things that we changed and adjust. That's all gone now. Now we're looking at software and, and valve bodies are a huge issue. And that's where the fluid conversation is such a big deal because they tell you you don't have to service it. But I'm here to tell you folks, those valves are sliding back and forth. They're very busy. In the old days, the solenoids turned on and off and valves turned on and off. Now everything is pulse width modulated. So I call them little buzzing valves. They're constantly walking a fine line back and forth, and it's adapting to your driving habits. So when we come back, we've got Susan, Tom, Howard, and Sam. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, and again, filling in for Matt Allen, who leaves me high and dry every chance he gets is Lee Weatherby with Accurate Automotive in Mesa. And I'll mention that because uh, it's new news to him. The number one nationally from the Automotive Training Institute, number one in the nation. So that's a big deal. But before I let you start talking, Lee, we're going to go to Susan in Phoenix on an 07 Hyundai Elantra. Go ahead, Susan. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. Thanks, guys. Um, what I'm wondering, and this does involve the transmission, but it involves car care in general, is um, who do I trust? I've got the dealership saying I need this checked out while I'm getting my oil change. I need to check the transmission fluid is this color or this other fluid is this color. My husband wants me to go to a private person to have it checked out that he trusts more. And when I ask my husband, my husband says, no, we're not spending that kind of money. You don't need it. Who do you trust? Well, who do you who do you believe that says you need this done? A, a private person, my dealership who sold me the car, or your husband who might be just being a little cheap? <laughs> <laughs> Susan, I certainly hope your husband is not uh, is not listening. If, if he is, I can refer you to some good counseling. <laughs> But, uh, boy, boy, Lee over here is just like, I, I can't wait to talk about this. And uh, it's a great question, and we can't, as consumers, we can't pretend that taking care of a car is free. These things need maintenance. You wouldn't, you know, uh, buy a nice car and park it in the ocean. It's going it's to ruin it. It's got to be taken care of. And then who do you trust? Well, I certainly have a great idea for that. That's bumper to bumperradio.com. There's a list of fine independent shops. But one of the things you talked about, do I go to the dealership? Do I go to an independent shop? And I'm not going to pick on anybody, 
But sometimes people think just because I'm at the dealership, I'm safe. And people think just because I'm at an independent, I'm safe. And you know what? Neither of those are true. It's you have to go be dealing with a good shop who's honest, who you have a relationship, and who's going to tell you. And you're going to, you're going to have to, as a woman, you're going to have to use a little bit of your intuition to say, are these honest guys uh, that are taking care of me? And I think of Lee's shop because they are so relational with their customers. They want to get to know them. Uh, you know, they want to send them, you know, cards and they want cookies also at Christmas time from their Absolutely. customers. So, I mean, Lee, maybe you can fill in a little <clears throat> bit more on that. Yeah, Susan, um, you know, you're you're in the same situation that, that, that every other uh, person that owns a car is. Um, and, and it's always a little difficult because it's, it's somewhat of a balancing act. But but the question is fabulous, and that is, who do you trust? And, and, and all I can tell you is trust has to be given first. It can't be earned. Um, trust is one of those things that um, you have to get in and feel comfortable uh, with a shop. I Just like Dave, I'm going to echo his sentiments, and that is, uh, I can give you a good place to start, and that is, you know, just go on to Bumper to Bumper Radio and look at any one of the shops there, and, and I can tell you from experience, having worked with most of those uh, owners, I would trust any one of them. But that's me. How do you find out for yourself? It's, it's, there's, a, there's a pretty simple process. You know, nowadays, everybody's got a computer they walk around with in their phone and everything else. You can go online and you can check out Better Business Bureau ratings. You can check out uh, reviews and what other people are saying about them. And then, you know, what I'm going to tell you to do, the most important thing is take it into one of these shops and sit down with them and have a discussion, have a conversation very openly, um, just as candid as you were here and asking the question and tell them that, you know what, you are a little bit nervous, a little bit intimidated uh, by the fact that you don't know who you can trust. Um, get them on your side so that you can uh, really get an evaluation. And then don't be afraid to, to get a second and third opinion. Um, we, when we have customers come in for the first time and they have to have a big buying decision, because let's face it, cars are a big buying decision. Um, when they're a big buying decision, we, we encourage that, you know what, talk about it with the powers that be, with your husband and, and those who are, are going to have to be, you know, pulling the string uh, on making the investment and then factor it out. You know, how long do I want to keep the car? You know, is it safety related? I mean, it, it's very simple. You can have it broken down for you so that you can interpret what, you know, the report says. And that's exactly what we do or any of the, the, the quality shops at Bumper to Bumper. They're going to get in and they're going to they're going to talk with you, help you understand what's priority, what can wait, and then what you really, really need to do now. And, and most of the time, that's going to be stuff that's related to safety. So fantastic question, Susan. Well, we've got Sam, Ken, Howard, and Tom, all with transmission questions. And we're going to go to Sam here in just a second. But with the one other point I wanted to make, there's two forms of service writers. The, the guy who's just a salesman, and he's going to sell you everything under the sun, and that's the way they do it. And then the other side of the spectrum, there's the guy who wants to be everybody's friend, doesn't want to charge you for auto repair. He doesn't want to have to see you spend money because we have a conscience on our end. We don't want to have to see our consumers spend their hard-earned money. And because of that, you know, we tend to not recommend all the things that they do need. So you have the both ends of the spectrum. And what really, when you have the relationship and he trusts you as a customer and you trust him as a shop, now you guys can make a decision. And we're not at two ends of the spectrum, one or the other. There's some gray in the middle and a whole lot of color. So really recommend you get that relationship started. So we're going to go to Sam in Phoenix with a transmission question. Go ahead, Sam. You're on Bumper to hey, Bumper Radio. Doing? doing good. Good. Hey, I've got a 2004 uh, Ford Expedition Eddie Bauer four-wheel drive. Um, it's uh, got about, I would say, 245,000 miles on it, the original transmission. Um, <clears throat> so I took it into a shop because there was an issue with the check engine light. They serviced it, and I guess it was just some vacuum vacuum line on the top of the engine. So they gave it they gave it back to me. I drove it back to the house, and in the morning, I parked it. And in the morning, my wife woke up and tried to move it, and it would move like three inches and then stop in reverse. And then she tried to pull forward, and it would move like three inches and forward and stop. It would just like you know, something was stopping, almost like a, a block under the tire. So, Sam, you said you did get the transmission service where you were in there getting that repair? No, I was just getting it repaired because the check engine light came on. Okay. And it started kind of smelling funny, and I guess there were some um, vacuum lines that had come apart so, on the engine itself. Long story short, so basically you got a major transmission problem now? No, I, I think I do. But here's the, here's the catch, though. To make a long story short, so I, had to, so I, I drove home. In order to move the car, I kind of floored it, and it, like... You know, went chunk, 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 chunk. You know what I mean? And then I stopped it. I'm like, oh, geez, that didn't sound good. 
So then the tow truck got there, and it kind of chunked it down the driveway, and I put it in drive to get it up to, to where the, uh, the flatbed tow truck was. Anyway, they loaded it on there, and I went to the shop, and there's no problem with the transmission. I'm driving it right now. Hey, Sam, what I'm going to do, because we're running up against time, and I want to answer your question, I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to I'm going to finish up here after the show with you. So uh, we want to, all these calls, we've got a lot of guys here to answer your calls. So stay on the line, and we'll definitely answer your questions. So transmissions, you know, we don't want to, you don't want to have to buy them, so you want to service it. You don't want to be reactive to transmission repair. You want to be proactive and prevent that visit and that tow truck situation and all the stuff that Sam's going through right now. So we're glad you could share your Saturday with us. Thanks, Lee, for coming in. Keith and Ken also. Lee, tell us again about Accurate Automotive and where we can find you. Accurate Automotive, we're a family-owned business located right in the heart of Mesa, 441 South Robeson. I've uh, been there 22 years and uh, just love what we do. To start a relationship with a great shop like Accurate Automotive, bumper to bumperradio.com. And uh, everyone would be praying for Matt as he's on a cruise and hope he makes it back next week. And uh, next week, next month is Car Care Month. Talk to you later.